everyone, welcome to another episode of One Two Three Wrestling right here on SRB TV. I am Kristen, and as always, I am joined by Nick Slade and Mo Brothers. Oh no, other way, Mo Brothers. So we are here, folks, to check out the massive AEW equivalent of the Showcase of the Immortals. I, I guess you can call it that. AEW's Double or Nothing 2022. Now, let's be honest, folks. AEW has had some rocky stuff as the last few months. It's still quality, but there's definitely been some clear issues with the product. Yeah. But, but we're not going to get there here. I mean, we got... I was talking to Mo about this before you got here, Nick. But, like, except for maybe, like, one match, there's a lot of good matches going on tonight. Um, but, that I'm looking forward to. Look, we're recording this day before, a couple days before, but like, luckily I watched Rampage just before we started recording, so now I know the full card because it has gone from twelve ma- 10 matches on the main card and one match on the buy-in to 12 matches on the main card and one match on the buy-in. So let's get started because we don't have a lot of time. So we're going to get started with the buy-in match, the pre-show match, which is Hookhausen against Tony Nese and Mark Sterling. Very this good, is, very evil. That's right. Uh, this has been going on for a while. Hook's been, they've been doing a good job building up Hook. And then Dan Housen got involved when he was unable to curse Hook, won a match. Uh, and then instead, because of Tony Nese not liking the way they've been booking Hook, um, now Hook and Dan Housen have finally agreed to a temporary truce, I guess, and are taking on smart Mark Sterling and Tony Nese on the buy in. You know uh, what this tag team reminds me of? What? Booker T and Goldust. I kind of, except Hook doesn't really talk. <laughs> like, he has some words now. It's more but, like, like St- Steve Blackman and Al Snow, head cheese. I'll go with that one. That uh, one. You don't, you don't want to go with Dusty Book? The old Dusty Book? Book Dust? That was a great tag team. I love Booker T and Goldust. Gold T. Okay, but honestly, we we already know who's more likely winning this. It's going to be Hookhausen. Um, Dan Housen had one match and lost, like in like less than a minute. Um, oh, stupid! It was really stupid. But like, we're here now, so I'm going to give it to Hookhausen. Obviously, I feel like this is just going to continue building a hook. Maybe it leads to an actual tag team with Hookhausen. Maybe this leads to Danhausen being Hook's mouthpiece, which I think is a good idea. But for now, I say Hookhausen wins this. Any other discussion? Yeah, I agree with that. And uh, But real quick, I didn't follow Danhausen in Ring of Honor. I always heard about him. But uh, now that I've got to see him at AEW, he, he's really grown on me. I think like at first when I heard his voice, is like, is that a bad French accent he's doing? Yeah, but, I've seen yeah, he had an interview with Chris Van Fleet like last year with a normal voice, and like, yeah, he has a he actually has a legit normal voice and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I don't doubt he has a real voice. I, <laughs> yes, I'm not saying yes. that's his actual voice. Yes. Big scoop. A year ago we confirmed he has a normal voice. Um, but um uh, got... yeah, I'm saying Dan House is really growing on me. I think he's pretty damn funny, and honestly. I like to see him and Orange Cassidy interact. I think that'd be inter- that'd be entertaining. Yes, it would him, Dan Housen, Orange Cassidy, and Toriano. Forbidden Jesus door. Jesus Christ. Forbidden door. Book it. How much? Bo- how much? How much? La- how much laughter can we stand? I don't know, but it'll be worth it. But we all agree, Hookhausen. Yeah, Hookhausen. Yeah. Okay, so our next match sees finally. The blow off to a match we should have got a blow off to all the way back in February in Revolution, which is the six man tag between Death Triangle and the House of Black. Now, of course, we already know this rivalry has been going for quite a while now, but then was put on pause due to that really gnarly injury Ray Phoenix got in that uh tag team championship uh contender match. Was it contender match? I don't remember. Yeah, so. All I remember was they showed it and I squirmed. So, like, but now Ray Fink's especially back. He lost the match against Kyle Riley in the Owen Hart um, tournament. And now full-on six-match between the two. This one's going to be interesting because, like, House of Black 
They've kept House of Black on a roll this entire time, winning all their matches, have not lost a match. Not even singles matches have lost. They have been still undefeated in AEW, the team, not in singles matches. Like, my Alkai lost to Cody, so, like, um, but, yeah, here we are now. Um, blow off to the rivalry. Um, I'm going to say Death Triangle because I feel like the trio's tiles are made apparently they are made we're just waiting for kenny to come back i, I feel was, uh, like, yeah i was actually gonna bring it up i feel like there's a lot of trios lately i feel like they're setting up a trios division they're gonna be like nah let's just spit up all the trios and turn them <laughs> they're not wwe teams. it's like but but con has confirmed that apparently con's confirmed the tag tile trios tag tiles are made but they're just waiting for Kenny. He wants really wants Kenny Omega a part of that p- picture. Um, so I don't know. I I yeah, think I'm just going. He's coming back. I didn't go with Death Triangle on this one. I feel like we built up this undefeated powerhouse in House of Black, and I feel like it's time for Death Triangle to get the upper hand this time. What do you guys think? I think this could go either way, honestly. But I do think. Death Triangle can get some revenge. I don't think it would hurt House mm-hmm. of Black for one loss. And um, so, yeah, it could go either way. But I'm going to go with Death Triangle. Mo, I think to be contrarian, House of Black is going to be just be contrarian because <laughs> you know they suddenly summon Julia Hart and then distracts oh. the bastard enough. <laughs> The he's and, a bastard. Like he's a bastard, but he's just like, you know what? It's wrong what you've done to her. And then she spits the venom in Pac's eyes and he's blinded yet again. And then yet it's again. like then you see the logo for double or nothing. And then it's like now I understand why it's called double or nothing. Because it happened to him for a second time. And now he can't see. So nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing but darkness. <laughs> Darkness, no parents. Sorry, remember Lego Batman song. Um, so next up we have Elite versus Delete as the Young Bucks take on the Hardys. So basically, it's simple. This is a battle of the younger generation, the newer generation versus the older generation. This is yeah, also- I wouldn't say younger, the Bucks are getting up there. I know. Um, it's also part of the Hardys farewell tour as well. And of course, we already know they've already had outstanding matches on the indie scene before they came back to WWE, right just before WrestleMania 33, you know? Yeah, I was there so, live. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so I'll, let me ask you this, because I'm going to talk about something I saw on Rampage. I told Mo about this. It was really funny. I want to ask you this. What can we expect from them, considering you've seen their previous work on the indie scene? The Hardys? The Hardys against Young Bucks. Well, I've, I've seen, I saw the match they had at um, Supercard of Honor. That was there live in Lakeland. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good match. It was a very good match. But also, it was a number of years ago, and both teams are older. So, honestly, I feel like they already had this, these matches really well in Ring of Honor. So, I don't really see it's – not, it's not like it's a dream match anymore. It's been done. Yeah, sure, it's the first time AEW, but whatever. Right. I just this feels like I just don't see a point in this match, honestly. I'm not saying it won't be good, but like I said, both teams are, are older. The Hardys are a little slower. They're still great. But yeah, I just did this feel like it was a thrown together match for the sake of having it. Then who do you think is gonna win then based on that? Well, it was the Hardys farewell tour. I'm gonna say the young bucks. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say the Hardys. Well, I that, think, yeah, the Young Bucks won the last time they fought, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I feel like this is, is going to pertain to the whole overall Undisputed Elite storyline. They're still going on with this, where, like, I, I guess, spoiler for what I'm going to think, wins the men's Owen. Like, Adam Cole's going to be successful, but the Young Bucks aren't. And, like, it's going to yeah. really show, like, like, they still can't get the job done on their end, but Adam Cole can. So... I'm going to go with, yeah, the Hardys to win. Okay, so let me tell you what happened on Rampage. Just a quick sec. So 
like I said, you've seen packages. You've been building this up for a while. On Rampage, the Hardy scene plays. The Young Bucks come out dressed as the Hardys. Um, Matt as Matt Hardy with the whole tight sh- tight shirt and everything. Uh, uh, is it Nick comes out as Jeff with the fishnet tank top, the undershirt, and with his face paint. And then Brandon Cutler comes out dressed as Lita. <laughs> with the with the fishnet top, the pants, and the underwear sticking out. Oh, so, yeah, no. Nick. No, no, but the I, ba- I specifically asked him never to describe that to me again. Oh. I'm glad that this is oh. now being recorded, and I hate you. <laughs> okay, and on top of that, when they're coming down to the ring, they have not Matt Hardy facts. They have Matt Jackson facts. That's well, that's funny, honestly. It's amazing. Oh, and the best part, they had Gang Girl come down to the ring with them. That's fucking funny. <laughs> and then after they won their match against the Jobbers, they pretty much attack Gang Girl, and then the actual Hardys come out to save Gang Girl. Yeah, what was Gang Girl expecting? But yeah, I'm A choosing Hardys. You got that. Yeah, I'm choosing Hardys. Mo, who are you picking? It's... Uh... I mean, I feel like I'm I'm gonna go with the Hardys on this just because I I know that when the when the Hardys and the Bucks at Supercard of Art that was like the last show that they had and then immediately appeared yeah, on WrestleMania. Next day, it was the next day, yeah. So it's like I saw I saw the Hardys come back at that WrestleMania, which is great. And then it was like not too long after that the Bucks were of course like in AEW or AEW was forming. So it's kind of like it's crazy to think that this is something that's actually occurring on um you know pay-per-view. Um like not to say super card of honor isn't like a pay-per-view, but just to say like in terms of one of the larger wrestling promotions out there, especially a newer one, to have something like this happen and the circumstances i mean if matt and jeff were of course satisfied to some extent at wwe a match like this wouldn't be going on probably ever again so um going with the hardys on this because i grew up on the hardys compared to the bucks you know based on everything i heard I'm going to switch to the Hardys. <laughs> yeah. I, think it, I mean, I want the Hardys the way I like. I actually like the Hardys way more to do the Young Bucks. Okay. So next up, um, I'm going to take, I'm going to go to oh, switch over to one of the matches that was just announced. Well, it was announced on Rampage, which is uh, Darby Allen taking on uh, Kyle Riley. Of course, this extends from the fact that Kyle Riley fucked up Sting's, uh, Pilmanize Sting's uh, foot on, um, Dynamite last Wednesday or the Wednesday. Is that before? why he's too injured to travel? I guess so. Um, he couldn't, he couldn't but, make the fan fest, and they had the offered refunds over it. Yeah, so he, so Darby issued a challenge during Rampage to Kyle for a match. I don't know. Man, I don't. I just, yeah, you know my what my opinion's gonna be on this. I don't. I don't think it's going to be a bad match because it's Kyle Riley and Darby Allen. They're both fucking mm-hmm. amazing, but like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's not, it does not wait for Dynamite. I'll give it to Kyle because I still, I'm still on board this on on this real elite train story train that they're doing right now. So, you know, if Adam Cole wins, Kyle Riley wins, but the Young Bucks don't win, kind of puts another wrench in that like grand plan. Adam Cole may or may not have gift payback on the bucks for killing him yeah uh, i'm going with darby allen but like i said the show already had a lot of matches and to me this this could have been just a, a, ma- a featured match on dynamite or even on the buy-in shit or yeah even on the buy-in okay mo I'm going to go with Kyle. It, I mean, Darby has had his share of wins, pay-per-view wins, and 
it'd be just on the end of like you know showcasing Kyle it'd be nice to see him come out with a pay-per-view win uh on AEW right he's done it plenty of times before on NXT but you know this would be his first pay-per-view win in AEW right so yeah I'm all about that Okay, so next up, I'll talk about the other match that was announced on Rampage, which was confirmed. And this one actually has a lot more story going to it, which is a six-person mixed tag team tag team match between uh, Sammy, Ty, and Frankie taking on American Top Team, which will be, of course, Ethan Page, Scorpio, Sa- Scorpio Sky, and Paige Van Zandt. So um, on Rampage, they did unveil Scorpio's very unique custom TNT title, which is about what I predicted. It's a yellow strap with a purple ribbon on it because, you know, Laker color, Lakers colors and all that. Um, and while they're celebrating in the ring with a new title, turns out Sammy, Ty, and Frankie go to American Top Team HQ, wreck one of the belts cases, and t- steal a couple of Dan Lambert's uh, trophy replica belts. Um, so they had enough. Scorpio Sky challenges them for the match. Now, of course, where do you start with the TNT title picture? It was great when Miro was there. It was fine when Sammy won it the first time. But then after that, just, I don't know. <laughs> just at one point, Tony admits that, like, he thought the fans would be behind Sammy and Ty, but then they boost, so he made them heels. But then they had Scorpio. They were acting like heels. Of course they got booed. So he switched them to heels. Then Scorpio is still a heel after he attacked Frankie after the match. Yeah, like, oh, Oh. now their faces. Oh, wait, they attacked Frankie. They're still heels. Like, what the fuck? This is a heel versus heel tag team match. I don't care what the fuck you say. Um, Except Frankie's a face. So why is Frankie a face working with Scorpio? who am I supposed to cheer in this match? The enemy Sammy and Ty, of my enemy is my who, friend. Who am I supposed to boo Earns? Who am I supposed to boo Earns? You're supposed who? to. Who am I supposed to boo Earns, damn it? Because. But, sorry, I forgot to add. The caveat is that if American Top Team wins, neither Ty nor, no, neither Sammy nor Frankie can ever challenge for a TNT title again. I believe as well, long as Scorpio is champion. Yeah, I know they weren't really clear on that, but I believe it's as long as Scorpio. Yes, that uh, should be. Which now, honestly, I was kind of hoping because there, I think Christopher Daniels pitched this match. It was going to be Frank Kazarian versus Scorpio Sky. It was Christopher Daniels' special guest referee. That would have been a good match. Why are we doing a six man match that could again, like the last match mentioned, could have been on Dynamite or the pre show? This show was already long enough. Why would you add these two matches to it? Dynamite so, needs matches too. So as far as I, I say American top team wins, I feel like we need no. to move on from this. We need to move no. on from this so hard. It's not even funny. We need to move on from this because I want to do something else with the TNT title already. No, I'm this, fine with I, moving away. Go ahead. Like, you know, I'm look, okay, fine. I'll admit, yeah, Cody threw a bit of wrench into the plans when he left, then resigned, signed, resigned with WWE. You know, fine, I'll admit that. But you had time to fix all of this. Turn Sammy heel. Make Scorpio and the American top team face. Let Dan Lambert join fucking Sammy. I don't care. Just so simple to fix this, and they just made it a big old clusterfuck of booking on this. But with that being said, I feel like this is Tony's way of fixing that by adding that stipulation of they can't challenge for the TNT titles as long as Scorpio's champion. Fine. I'm saying American Top Team just so we can be done with this story. I'm fine with moving away from Scorpio Sammy, but I still think there's plenty to talk about with Scorpio and Frankie. That, you know, I'm fine with that. But the Sammy Scorpio ties, that, that shit needs to end. Yeah, so the reason I think. I'm going Kazarian's team because he still, I think, needs one more match with Scorpio. I want to see, I want to see that match with Christopher Daniels, like Kazarian versus Guy with Daniels as the referee. I think that'd be a great match. Stories written for itself. Mo, what do you think? I think uh, American Top Team will come out 
above because I'm not going to I'm not going to use the word it's too easy I'm not going to fall into that trap um they're going to come out above because they are the upper they are the upper team from the United States and I feel like you know so Sammy and Frank can't get the TNT title but then Christopher Daniels comes back in a way and challenges Scorpio and Frankie is the ref to take from your idea, Nick. I guess we can go with well no, Frankie's the ref. He has a clear bias. If Christopher Daniels is the ref, he's still friends with both of them. So he would be down the middle. That's why I thought that worked. Well, I mean, there could be additional stipulations, you know, like if Frankie if there seems to be clear bias that Frankie can't something else would be penalized against him or he's like fired from AEW or whatever. But I feel like it could work out better if they, if American top team wins this. Mm -hmm. So next up, um, let me see. Okay. Let's go with this. So we have the other great, the other big grand uh, tag team match, which is the anarchy in the arena match. The, Stadium Stampede 3, but we're calling the it... The not-stadium stampede match. Because they're in an arena, not a stadium. Uh, so we have the Jericho Appreciation Society versus Blackpool Combat Club, LAX, oh, and LAX, pretty much. Uh, so, um, yeah, so basically, this has been going on for a while now. We saw it start at Revolution with the whole shaking the hand thing, then falling dynamite. They did it. Jericho heel turn. Introduce Jericho Appreciation Society. They've been doing this for a while now, for a while now. And, like, it hasn't seemed like Eddie Kingston and St. Tarantino's been getting the upper hand until now recently where it's being very heated. And so Eddie Kingston called on favor because his best buddy just so happens to be a member of the hottest uh, stable in AEW right now, which is the Blackpool Combat Club. And that's where we got here. And now we're here. Um, oh, oh, Jericho's a wizard now because he threw fireball in Eddie Kingston's face and a production assistant's face because he was wearing a Moxley shirt. He's a wizard. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sorry. It's fireball. Yeah, no <laughs> okay, okay. So basically, that's how we got to this match. And I see it should be fun. Um, I've definitely seen Team Blackpool Combat Club and LAX winning this. It feels like we've been, yeah. like, the Jericho Appreciation hasn't gotten their comeuppance yet. Like, I can defend, like, House of Black winning their match because, like, they feel dominant. They are not a joke team. They feel dominant and feel like they can continue to be dominant until eventual trios tag title tournament or something like that. Jericho Appreciation Society can eat a loss. I feel like they can eat a loss and still be fine. Like, still bitch and moan about their loss, shit like that. And it should be entertaining. Um, I think yeah, the first... Yeah, dollar store, inner circle doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the first, of course, the first DMCMP match is the best one. The second one was fine. Last year's was fine. Um, This year should be interesting because we're, we're in an arena this time with a full crowd. So I want to see how they're going to pull this off. Because last year they had, like, a smaller crowd. This one's a much bigger crowd, so... But I'm going to give it to um, Kingston's team. Yeah, I'm going with Black BBC LAX. Yes. Um, BCC LAX. I was. <laughs> I'm thinking. I have two thoughts in my head right now. Why do you think they call them BCC? <laughs> well, now I was I'm thinking. Just... I was thinking about the BBC because. I was Dr. thinking, shit. well, I was thinking, like, instead of them. I know what you were thinking the, about. Uh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about a bunch of, like, hoity-toity, like, like if Blackpool Combat Club came out dressed like they were from Downton Abbey and getting ready to beat up people. It's like. BBC. Or you have all of them dressed up as different characters from whatever the BBC's major TV shows would be. Not all, of course, Doctor, Doctor Who. Who. Okay. 
With Maybe Johnson. Matt Barry. So okay, yeah. so you say so Nick, you say Blackpool Combat Club. Modi say the same. East, East, uh, yeah, I'm right. going with the East West connection of the Blackpool and LAX. Oh, and a best of Super Juniors update because even though we're recording this before his next match, where he has been doing good in the best of Super Juniors. He hasn't won all of his matches, I admit, but he's been doing well. Uh, you know who else has been killing it? That X Robbie champion, X Division champion Ace Austin. Dude, he's fucking so over in New Japan now. It's ridiculous. Wow, he's so over in Japan. I'm happy for him. He's like, okay, I'm getting completely off topic, but like, he yeah. is so, he's been so amazing. It's been nice for my non impact side of things to see a lot more of what he's capable of. And he really, he's been really showing that in best of the super juniors. There's a reason why the past few years people keep saying he's a future impact world champion. But, don't sleep on that Robbie Eagles Phantasmo match. That match is fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Fucking amazing. Sorry. Oh, but yeah, overall, we're you doing good. Um, so let's see. Next match up. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. We got the for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. We got a three-way match between Jungle Bo- well, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, Team Taz. And what do they call now? Was it uh, Swerve and Glory? Swerve of Glory, um, which is Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. So um, basically, the main part of this is on the Team Taz Swerve Keith part of things because they've been feuding since Swerve and Keith debuted. They've been back and forth on wins, and it's and it's boiled over to now the does the Jurassic Express side of things. Um, so here's my take. I think Team Taz are winning the tag titles because they are already they started sprinkling the seeds for Christian Cage turning heel on Jungle Boy. Um, there's been a couple hints at there's been a few last weeks, there's been hints at that, and I feel like Team Taz could use the tag titles next. I mean, why not? Bear, Bear establishment was a, a good, a solid team overall. It's better than that fake belt. You mean it? Ooh, oh, don't, don't let Taz hear you say that. It's a fake belt. It has no credibility. But anyways, I'm... They, they could have made it credible, but they didn't. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to go with Team Taz on this one. Oh, you know, I'm going to make Taz even more mad. It is it is the wrestling belt equivalent of a participation trophy. True. Nick, we got... We got... Uh, I want Keith Lee and Swerve to win. They've been so great as a tag team, right? When they first slapped together, you went, come on, they're better. But then they've been just fucking great together. Some great chemistry between the two. Part of me thinks Team Taz will win because they can still continue that feud, but I feel like the feud's been going on long enough. Unless they decide to have Team Taz win the tag titles and either Lee or Swerve takes the FTW title. True. Because that can start giving credibility, have it be held by somebody outside of Team Taz. Okay, um, I'm going Mo, with Lee and Swerve because that's what I want. <laughs> cool, Mo. What say you? I am. Uh, well, I could I could go one of two ways here, but um, I'm still going with my boys, Jurassic Express. I feel like they will still find a way to come out on top. I do find it interesting that between this pay-per-view and the last one, they are in yet another triple threat match where essentially they're not the main story. Yes. Yeah. That's why I said like I did when we were, when I started this topic of, but uh, I'm still going to go with them for the win. Okay, cool. So our next match, okay, is the Men's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Finals as the current reigning defending Ring of Honor World Television Champion Samoa Joe takes on Adam Cole. Baby. 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 <laughs> yes, baby. Um, so... Yeah, so basically, um, on the Samoa Joe side of things, he has his feud with Satnam Singh and Jay Lethal's group. On uh, Adam Cole's side of things, 
like I said, the undisputed lead storyline going into this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with Adam Cole, basically because of um, okay. s- s- yeah, baby, because of Samoa Joe's current feud going on with uh, Jay Lethal's group. Um, I feel like he, I feel like no, he winning this tournament. Why not? Like, look, if Adam Cole wins this, then that means Ruby's probably gonna win the women's. I mean, I'm gonna go with Adam Cole in this. It feels like they need to give him something for now. And like I said, it does kind of further the storyline with the whole Undisputed Elite. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Adam Cole on this. Okay. It's going to be a great fucking match. I, I believe they said that. No, wait. No, that was a different match. Never mind. But, yeah, I think it should be, it's going to be a really good match. Um, what say you guys? Uh, I want Samoa Joe to win. We all want Samoa Joe to win. Just because I'm going for the other guy doesn't mean I want the other guy to win. Yeah, it sounds like you do. It's good. Go either way, depending on who interferes. Fuck it, I'm going with Joe. Okay. So, Mo? Going with the Joe. I'm going with the Joe. Yo, going with Joe. the Joe. Go. Joe. Going with the Joe. Joe. Going Joe. with the Joe. 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 Going, going, going. All right, so Joe. me and Mo are going with some Mojo, and Christian, you were going with Adam Cole, baby. Baby. Cool chugs. Okay, so let's see what next. Oh, uh, next up is the Women's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament as Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, a person who's never had a pub sub, apparently. Uh, I was at oh. Megacon. I was at Megacon for her panel. Uh, well, I was at Megacon. I went to her panel, and people were shocked that she hasn't had a pub- public sub yet. Oh, okay. Well, isn't people, no, there was legit gasp in the audience. I swear, I'm not making this up. All Although, those public marks. Do they have publics in Pennsylvania? No, her. Well, she no hers is hers. Her dentistry is based in Florida. Oh, well then. Because no she even brings up because <laughs> she even brings up how her hygienist is on her about not having a pub sub yet. Oh, and the other fun thing, she was asked if she were to go to the convention dressed up as anybody, who would it be? A pub sub? Uh, no, uh, Thunder Rose. <laughs> no, Thunder Rosa, because nobody would pay attention to her. Oh, which I'm like, that, that's so mean, mm. but so true. But uh, <laughs> taking on. At uh, take on Ruby Soho. So, um, wait, did she beat Statlander already? Yeah, uh, like I said, Rampage was as is green. We were doing Rampage? this after me. Yes, it was a good match. Uh, okay. all, crowd was actually in it for one thing. I mean, I knew I knew so I was gonna win, I just wanted to make sure that was confirmed. No, you want to hear the funny part? Brick comes out and like Ruby goes, Everybody's tired of hearing you talk, crowd booze. <laughs> Crowd booze. I'm not fucking kidding. You can watch it back. Crowd fucking booze. Um, but the story going. There's no real big story going into this because AW is having a, still having problems with their women's division. But basically, um, That's Brick got. But one key thing is Brick got to the finals thanks to the help of um, Jamie Hader helping in a match against Tony Storm, and um, Ruby just needs a big W. He does because. They ever since they brought her hand, she just keeps losing. So my pick for this is Ruby Soho because we need to salvage more non Britt Baker women for the women's division. Yeah. There's more women on your roster, AW, than just Britt Baker. Don't be like there to be with Charlotte Flair. Like I would say Adam and Britt win because they're a real life couple, but I feel like that should be just a swerve and it should be Ruby winning the women's yeah. tournament. Yeah, I'm Ruby honestly, I wanted Tony Storm to win, but I'm also happy, happy with Ruby winning. Okay, we got we got a Ruby um, Mo. I mean, it's I I feel like it's definitely I I feel like it's gonna be Ruby. I it's just like it makes it stand out a little bit more compared to you know. I mean, I could easily see if Britt won, and then she's just like, I I'm a AEW Women's World Champion. I'm I'm the winner of the Owen Hart Cup for the women's. 
I can beat this person. I've beaten this person, like doing a whole lot of things. But it would be a whole different thing if, you know, uh, she loses. And she'll probably lose, like, in a dirty fashion, I guess. Not that saying that Ruby would cheat, but more or less, like, yet again, someone's trying to cheat for Brit and it just backfires and ultimately mm-hmm. she wins ultimately yeah, I feel, ruby wins yeah i feel like um jamie's gonna cost brit that's one reason i went for ruby because it feels like it's gonna finally cost brit using her um heel buddies at to her advantage and probably set up some kind of feud between uh jamie and brit but we'll have to wait and see on that so um in our other women's match on the card we have Jay Cargill defending once again against Anna other, Jay. There's three. What do you mean other? Huh? You forgot about the women's title match. You forgot about Thunder Rosa. <laughs> no, let me ex- no, let me explain. No, I'm saying the other match. I'm being sarcastic about this match because this is for the TBS Championship, a match that was set up last minute with only one promo segment, one tiny promo segment. Sorry if I'm being too sarcastic with this. I am aware of the A to B Women's World Championship match. I'm sorry if sure? I'm worried that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty sure because it's the only other relevant women's match. Not this one, though. So basically, the premise is Anna Jay came to make the save against Jay Cargill after the uh, Ruby advance to the finals, beating um, Jay, no, to the semifinals, beating Red Belt. No. You know what? It doesn't matter. AJ made a save against one of the people who moved forward in the Owen Hart Finals tournament, and now we're here. That's it. That's that's the match. That nothing else. I swear to you. I say this. This is my least give a fuck match on this card. Here's another like, match that didn't have to be on the pay per view. This is a match that needed to be anywhere else but this pay per view. <laughs> Anywhere else, like dark, dark elevation. Fucking give them this match. Not like, no, just just no. I don't care. It's gonna be Jade. I will be generally shocked if it's they give it to Anna, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be Jade. I feel like they're still building up somebody else to uh to um take the tile from Jade. My money is still on uh Brit. Um, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um yeah, that's all I got. Does anybody have anything to say about this match? No. Cool. Mo? As much as I'd like AJ to win, she's not going to. Yeah. Mo? I mean, what? Well, I had a thought. Uh, Anna J <laughs> loses. Anna J loses because, you know, her friend Ty had a uh, she was there when Ty lost. Anna loses. And then all of a sudden, she also turns heel. And then uh, slowly, all the Dark Order turns heel again. And then it's just like a corruption that comes off of uh, the woman losing to Jade. She just turns them all evil. So, try, so you're just trying to make dark rel- dark order relevant again? I'm sorry because they have not been relevant. I like I don't mean trying to be mean and say this, but when's dark last time dark order has been relevant? True. Well, or just gonna move on. So next up is I mean, oh so next up is our other AEW women's match is for women's world championship as Dunder Rosa defends against Serena Deeb. Now to be fair, I don't have anything to, to say. Fair. About. Uh, to be fair, uh, I don't have anything to say about. I don't really have anything much to say about this match. Pretty much, Serena Day became number one contender after being her Karushita again. Um, set up this match. They've had little to no promo time. Like the Rosa they have did. has been terrible. Serena Deep cut a good promo on Dynamite this past Wednesday. It was really well done. Are you talking and- about the one where she? Um- Demasculated Dustin Rhodes. Oh, I thought she murdered him. Demasculate murder. What's the difference? Anyways, and then Dunder Rosa had her speech on dynamite, which was good, but like 
I haven't cared. Like, Thunder Rosa apparently has had a total of over 20 minutes of on-screen time since this feud started. This oh, has not over been booked minutes. well. No, this has not. Like, I we'll get to Paige Punk, but I feel like even though I know who's going to win, I still feel like that could go our way. This match is a complete opposite. I know Thunder Rose is going to win this. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. This is her first challenger post winning the Women's World Championship. She's winning this. She's retaining. God's sakes. Both of these women need mouthpieces. Now, I think it's still going to be a good matchup. Let me get that out of the way, though. Yeah, they're good wrestlers. God's sake, that, those promos have been bad. Yes. But you agree with me? Yeah, Thunder Rosa. Well? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So next up is our pen ultimate match, which is MJF versus Wardlow. So this, this has been building for a while. Culmination was at Revolution when Wardlow turned face and more or less helped Punk win against MJF. And since then, um, he first MJF booted him, Wardlow off, off TV, but Wardlow wouldn't stay away. Had some really great moments overall. Then he put him back on the card against opponents MGF's choosing. And then that was interesting for a while because he wouldn't let his music play. People would chant his name to the ring. They give him the Goldberg entrance, basically, except without the Goldberg music. Um, then they eventually came to two stipulations. You have to clear him for face him to face. World that face MGF at double or nothing. First being the 10 lashes, like with Cody, which was a fun, funny segment this time because World of no sold and none of the bell shots. Um, and then there was the other submission, which is uh, winning a steel cage match against Sean Spears with um, MGF, a special guest ref, which mm-hmm. thanks to some accidental chicanery by Sean Spears, World was able to pick up the win against Sean Spears. Spears can't do his job. Yes. And now we're here. Of course, they added the stipulation where if Warlow loses this match, he can no oh is it he cannot obtain an AEW contract. So it's so. obvious. <laughs> I no, you know what? This but is he could unlike, get a reign of honor contract. Uh-huh. Thank you. There was talk about that, but this is not like the Rosa D match you're talking about. This still this is another one that still could go either way. Maybe like, Steve would not have Wardlow win. They they need to take advantage of, of his hot streak right now. Wait, you just said Mo, did you hear what he said? He said like you hope Wardlow loses. What? You basically just said War you're hoping like War, that Warlow should win because the short win because he's on a hot streak. He should win because he's on a hot streak. Okay, sorry, you sound like the opposite, but um, that's not what I said. <laughs> yeah, I think it should be a great audience-driven, story-filled match overall. I mean, these two, two are still great competitors, and there's gonna be a lot of chicanery throughout this match. But I'm still gonna say we're all getting a win and getting an AW contract. Yeah, so this is a um. Feud has been very well done because it just falls it falls basic wrestling storytelling. They've done a great job of slowly building us up over the year past few couple of years. Uh getting Warlow more and more sick of MGS bullshit. Mm-hmm. Uh one thing I do have to criticize is this is the fourth time they have done the storyline of you have to jump through hoops to get a match with MJF. They did it with Cody Rhodes. They did it with Chris goal. Jericho. They did it with CM Punk, and now it's Wardlow. Well, that's that's how, that's how MGF works because he yeah, likes. But the why? Fun why does MGF get to dictate this? He's just another employee on the roster. Tony well, Khan should be able well, to book because, him against anybody. Well, well, because Mark Mark Sterling does all the legal stuff for him. That's why. Does is that actually true, or is, are you just that's making that k- up? Kayfabe wise, Smart Mark Sterling is the one. Dude, I'm not saying he legit cocks the Tony and says No, this. no, I'm saying is that actually in kayfabe? I believe so. I'm pretty sure because, like, he was there at the contract signing, so he's the one who filled out the, 
the contract, you want to fill out the contracts it's, like they had to sign. So, I mean, it just seems like nonsense. Like, why does MGF get special treatment? But you, Yuri, Wardlow? Yeah, Wardlow. Yeah, obviously. It's Batista pushing against Triple H. Yeah. Mo? I just want to say before I say my piece, Nick, remember that time that you told me in confidence that you hate Wardlow so much that you hope he loses everything he holds dear? Yes. Remember that? Remember that? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm going with Wardlow because I believe yeah. in Wardlow. Yeah. Yeah, You're doing it to be sarcastic. How could you? That's just the way I am. Slap. So uh, honestly, but if MJF wins, we all have to go. Wardlow. Yes, we do. That's going um, to be a T-shirt. And so, Mo Wardlow as well. Uh, yeah. Yep. yep uh, speaking yep. of T-shirts, I wanted to mention earlier we should have a T-shirt with Mo's face on it called "Be" and it says "Be Contrarian." <laughs> That's. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about my likeness being put on shirts. You get paid for it. Well, you get the goofy, put the goofiest face on there, and there it just says "Be Contrarian." Be, be Contrarian. Yes. This serious, this serious mo face, and it says "Be Contrarian." Be Contrarian. Uh, so, in our main event match, God forbid, oh God, are, we, are we finally here? God forbid, basketball gets involved. It is Hangman Adam Not Page. Basketball. Defending his AEW World Championship against CM Punk. Basically, it has the same basic step that D. Broza has. Uh, Punk has officially become number one contender for the title. And now we're here. It has been some good buildup, honestly. It really has. Like, I feel like this has been a better, like, title feud Paige has had since winning the title. You know, it's been really well done. Um, Punk is easily playing mind games with Paige, you know, asking him to shake his hand, saying he's just here. Regardless who wins or loses, he's going to shake his hand. And you can tell Paige is a bit rattled. You can tell on Dynamite when they had their conversations how Paige is making this AEW, not like Paige versus Punk, but AEW versus Punk, basically. And like... He got in his skin, punched Punk on Dynamite. And so it does seem like this really could go either way. Now, purse myself, I think it's been so great buildup. They had us believing this, but I still think Adam Page, Hangman Page is going to retain. Um, really? I feel like, yeah. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Ask really? again. Yes. Ask, ask one more time. Really? Yes. Um, Five more times. No, but uh, seriously, I think he's going to win. I feel like Punk can eat the loss. I feel like Paige can move forward with this. I, but it's who? He's beaten Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, and maybe. now he's facing CM Punk. Like, who's who would be next? Goldberg, you just said you just said the words. Who's, who's going to be next? Goldberg's next. Goldberg. But uh, yeah, so I think uh, Paige is gonna win. Gonna okay. Mm. <laughs> now I think Punk's gonna win because it Punk's not gonna be around as long as Hangman Page. Let's face that. Right now, you have Punk for God knows how long. You need to take. He was your big, one of your biggest signings recently. You gotta take advantage of him while he's here. And mm -hmm. I don't. It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt Page credibility to lose the punk and saying he beat Brian Danielson and Cole. So you've already established he is a top guy. Right. And then, yeah, you have Punk win the title, and he can lose it to somebody else down the line. Probably MGF. As much as I don't want that. Uh, but yeah, and honestly, it's, it's kind of hard to tell this feud who's the heel because, yeah, Paige being aggressive, sure, and yeah, Punk being a smarmy prick because that's just who CM Punk is. I don't know, it feels like it's a feud between two tweeners. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, they've made it very heavily like a tweener feud, um, overall. But you're going with Punk, yeah, I just. 
think okay. AEW should take advantage of his name value while they have him. Okay, Mo? I think that they will take advantage of his name value, but not by giving him the belt at this time. I think this match is going to be awesome, and it will be Paige coming out on top yet again. So, uh, I mean, really enjoyed the dog dog collar match at Revolution, and I feel like let's go, Adam. Punks, Adam sucks. I, I feel, I feel like with uh, Punk's skill and capability, there's going to be a lot going on in the match in which we can uh, very much appreciate it. But ultimately, Paige will come out on top. Okay. All right. So there we go. Um, the only question I have left for you folks is. Are we getting any New Japan pro wrestling interference at any point of the night? Well, now, no dynamite. Yeah, I was going to bring it up. So, no on dynamite. Uh, the re- the Reinvar tag title match became a no contest as um, United Empire, which in this case was represented by Jeff Cobb and Gray O'Conn, showed up in Rick House. So, we know that's probably going to be a match at Forbidden Door. Um, do we think there's any any appearances, any interferences? There has been a lot, non Ibushi wise. There's been a lot of talk about who's going to be showing up and stuff like that. With hints of Osprey showing up, with hints of Kenta maybe showing up. With like that's like, look, I want your Toriano versus fucking Danhausen versus Orange Cassidy. I'm be honest. But, like, with Taguchi as special guest referee. Um, but, like... Well, you, get, you gotta start building the Forbidden Door. You're a month away. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, Somebody so... could show up. Yeah, so, so you raise your interference. Who do you think will show up or interfere? Well, if you want to do a major thing, I have Okada showed up. And it's confront whoever wins the world title match. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, I, uh, let me see. Yes. Interfering. I think somebody will pop up or interfere. And yeah, I think I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say Okada as well. I feel like that should be an amazing match regardless. Though there's so many other dream matches you can do. Like, I think a lot of people also want Keith Lee versus Ishii. For instance, mm-hmm. like that match I've heard, they fought before and it was oh, a banger. That reminds me, you know how we were wondering why Ishii beat um, Jonah? Mm-hmm. That, that's because Jonah's short short contract with Impact expired, but he said he would he could he's not putting up possibility of going back in the future to Impact. Yeah, I could also see Osprey showing up at some point. Maybe the fuck didn't I heard he got hurt? Didn't he? I have to look that up. I believe he's recovering from a kidney issue, kidney infection. But I believe mm-hmm. he should be fine by Forbidden Doors, from mm-hmm. what I've been hearing. Um, Mo, what do you think? Interference? And if so, like, anybody specific you think is going to show up? I think you guys are getting your hopes up. I don't think that any interference is going to happen from okay. New Japan during this pay-per-view. Any There's appearances? plenty of shows. No. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, you got a month to build up to this major crossover show. You kind of want to oh, get yeah. the ball rolling on that. Well, yeah, but uh, don't really know. Uh, right. Like whoever, whoever's already at the on the. West Coast for New New Japan Strong is in California, right? Or they, yes, they're based yeah. in yeah, they're based in California because that's where the LA dojo so, is. Yeah, so it's like I feel like if there was gonna be people, would be anyone who's already in the LA dojo area. Okay, so Jay okay. White. Well, I mean, Jay White's made an appearance already previously. On, yeah, and he uh, had yeah, he has yeah. And they have confirmed that him and Juice Robinson are going to be on the best Super Junior Finals sh- uh, show. So white juice. 
So Play anyways, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Um, I'm going to ignore what Mo just said. So I hope you guys enjoy our reactions to AEW. Sure. I hope you enjoy oh, our... <laughs> I hope you enjoy our reactions to AEW WNLT 2022. Try to sync up to the best of your abilities. We're going to try to sync up to the best of our abilities, but we hope you guys enjoy the show. So see you later. Hopefully we're not as exhausted as we may look right now. I juiced. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and start us at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.